Happy New Year and welcome to Airgun Action. In this week's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at the Konus Pro first focal plane telescopic sight from Rangerite, but before that, we join Rich Saunders on what turns out to be a really productive session controlling grey squirrels. So we're out in the woods again today, it's really cold now, nice bright sunny day. There are some patches of fog and mist around as well, uh, but I don't think that's, that's going to put the squirrels off. Now we're in the, in the woods shooting the squirrels because of the damage that they cause to the trees by stripping bark and the, the lumber here is farmed for its timber value. Um, but also the squirrels do an awful lot of damage to indigenous native species. Um, in particular they will predate on songbird nests and eggs. And that's a particular problem here because uh, we've noticed just recently uh, firecrests are nesting in the wood and they are a protected species. So uh, we're going to set our gear up and then head off to a couple of hides. Now when it comes to controlling squirrels, ambush tactics are by far and away the most effective uh, tactic. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Neil's on a, a hide and I'm going to get on mine as well. Now in terms of gear, I'm using a Brocock BRK Ghost. It's a 2.2 calibre 12 foot pound rifle. Um, I've been using this an awful lot and I'm really liking it. The side action, uh, the side lever is really, really good. It's very accurate as well and plenty of shots. This is the carbine version. I paired that with an MTC um, Cobra F1 scope and that is held on with sports match mounts as ever and Neil on the other hide he's also using an MTC scope with, uh, with sports match mounts and he's got that on a Huntsman Regal. Now I've been running this 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 feeder throughout the whole winter and it's worth doing it because as, as the natural food diminishes the squirrels come to rely on the peanut feeders more and more and more and if you let them go empty then they just go elsewhere to look for their food. Now peanuts are expensive but they are the best bait but what I tend to, you, tend to do is if I'm not going to be shooting for a while then I keep it topped up with maize and I've even used chicken feed as well just to keep something in the feeders but if I'm going to be shooting then I'll, I'll try and fill them up with peanuts about a week, 10, do, 10 days or so before I actually shoot because peanuts simply are the best bait. Well, I didn't have to wait long for that one. That's a good sign.
Well that was about as straightforward as they come. The feed is only about 20 metres away, which is ideal for a 12 foot pound gun. He came in from the left and he went straight to the feed. He'd obviously been there lots of times before. Um, now I've not got a silencer on the Ghost. Um, and although it's quite a quiet rifle, I did notice that when it hit that squirrel there, it went off with a real, cr a real crack. There's a little bit of fog and mist around as well, so I think that's probably accentuating the sound as well. But yeah, the noise from the gun is actually quite quiet, but the impact on the squirrel there was really loud. Well, that was pretty much a carbon copy of that uh, that last one came and sat on the feeder nice and confidently um, yeah so that's two down I can see a squirrel, he's on a tree stump, way over there on the left, he's sat still like a garden ornament. 
Um, it's too far away for me to take a shot and also is at a bad angle for me. But these peanut feeders are so attractive, they're like magnets for squirrels at this time of year. I'm pretty sure he's going to come in on the feeder before too long. Well, they're coming thick and fast now. Peanuts are really pulling them in. Well, I've got two squirrels, one coming in from the left, running up and getting a peanut, and then running off again, and another one coming in from the right, doing the same thing, running in, getting a peanut. They've been backwards and forwards two or three times. I think they're both competing for the same food and spooking each other. But hopefully one of them will hang around long enough for me to get a shot. I've had a squirrel dashing in and out three or four times, grabbing a peanut and running off and not giving me a shot. There's a few pheasants around and I think the pheasants are spooking him. But hopefully the pheasants will move off before the squirrel does and I'll get a shot.
Well, I managed to get him. He came back and he hung around long enough. Um, I think we're going to call that a day. Quite a few squirrels accounted for, and I'm sure Neil's had a load as well. So I'm going to go and pick up those ones and go back and see how he's got on. So thanks very much for watching. Rich Saunders and his mate carrying out a really effective cull on the grey squirrels there. Next up, I'm taking a look at the Conus Pro telescopic sight from Range Right. Right, it's a bit of a change this week as I'm looking at a scope instead of a gun. Now it's the Conus Pro F30 in its 6 to 24 by 52 FFP guys from Range Right. Now I haven't had a lot of experience with Conus scopes but they're made in China and tend to focus on delivering good features and performance at a competitive price. Now, this one retails for £450 and given the list of features that it boasts, does seem to be very sensibly priced. So, let's kick off with this scope's proportions. Now, it has a 30mm tube, which is important to know when you're buying mounts, and it's 397 millimetres long. Weight-wise, it tips the scales at a pretty substantial 770 grams. So you couldn't really describe it as being compact or lightweight, but with a 52 millimetre objective lens and a six to 24 times zoom range, you wouldn't really expect it to be. There are several magnification options in the range and I think a lot of shooters are going to really like the 6 to 24. Now, wind it down to the lower settings and you've got a nice wide field of view and improved light gathering. And of course, at the top end, you've got some pretty serious magnification for long range work. Now, the grooved zoom dial at the rear of the tube turns nice and smoothly and with just the right amount of torque. This scope is equipped with a half mil reticle and being a first focal plane scope, that reticle changes size in proportion with your target as you zoom in and out so all of your aim points remain in exactly the same place. Now the reticle is bold enough to be able to see it plenty clearly on lower magnification settings, yet still remains fine enough for pretty precise shot placement at the higher end of the zoom scale. Now it has plenty of aim points, but most importantly, it doesn't look too cluttered. At the bottom of the sight picture, there's a bubble level, although my scope cam shots are too tight to show it. Now, if you ensure that that bubble is around the middle of the scale, you'll know that you aren't canting your gun either to the left or to the right. Now, there's also a fast focus eyepiece at the rear of the ocular bell, and that enables you to ensure that the reticle is pin sharp for your eye right from the outset. Also positioned on the ocular bell is the dial that controls the illuminated reticle. Now give it a turn and it lights up the central element of the crosshair, either in red or blue, in a choice of five different levels of brightness. Now it's a really handy feature for when you need improved contrast against darker backgrounds. Moving forward, you've got your windage and elevation turrets. Now they're resettable and finger adjustable. You just need to lift them up to unlock them. Now, they turn with very positive clicks, each one adjusting point of impact by one tenth of a mil. Once you've got them set, all you need to do is snap them back down to lock them securely 
in position. Now I've actually shot the box with this scope while out on the range and I've got to say that after making all those adjustments I was really impressed with just how accurately it returned to the original zero. The left hand turret is your side parallax wheel and that focuses from just 10 yards out to infinity. Now it's a nice large wheel and it turns smoothly and if you have the scope set on the higher magnification settings to reduce your depth of field, you can even use it to estimate range as the target snaps into focus. In terms of image quality, I'm impressed. Lenses are multi-coated and the combination of a 30mm tube and a large 52mm objective lens results in a pretty bright sight picture. Now clarity is also good with no obvious blurring anywhere. Now the, the scope cam footage that I've shot through my little handy cam really doesn't do this scope justice, not least because I was out in freezing fog. The Konus Pro F30 is waterproof and nitrogen purged so it shouldn't fog up in damp conditions. Now it's also shockproof and it should be more than tough enough to withstand the kick of a recoiling air gun. Now this model also comes with some really handy extras including a screw in 100mm sunshade and push on flip up lens covers. So that's the Konus Pro F30 FFP scope from Rangerite in its 6 to 24 by 52 guys. Now I think it's great. It's loaded with useful features, has decent image quality and appears to be very well made. Now that 6 to 24 times zoom range should cover pretty much everything from pest control to target shooting. On top of that it's a good looking scope and all at a sensible price. Do try to have a look through one if you get a chance. That's all we have time for in this episode, but we'll be back with much, much more in two weeks' time. Thank you for watching, and may I wish you all the best for 2023 from myself and the rest of the Airgun Action team.